for buying a silver. Um, and the three poems I'm going to do are quite different. So when I came on and I was doing my little sound check, I realised I was really nervous. So I'm going to start off by doing the only poem that I know of by heart, and that poem is called Falling, and it's about my experience with depression. So when I was in uni, I'm not in uni anymore, by the way. I'm grown now. But um, when I was in uni, um, I, I went through like a, a period of like two years of severe depression, and I had never gone through anything like that. I think I've always been a, the kind of person that I feel like if you're going through something, my mentality is get over it. You'll be fine. Do you know what I mean? But when you go through something and you feel like you have no control over, it's almost like, wow, okay, so this is new, how do I handle this? And it, it's, I feel like it almost gave me like a punch in the face and it almost like a, I had to sit up and be more sympathetic when someone speaks to me and tells me I'm going through something, I can't just kind of brush it off and be like, you'll be okay, do you know what I mean? Take a breather, like, I need to really be like, sis, are you okay? What can I do to help? Do you want to go see a counsellor? Are you on medication? To really kind of like go through the steps and, and be proactive in trying to be helpful and not just saying you'll be okay because saying you'll be okay isn't helpful to someone that's going through things. So yeah, this poem is called Falling and it's about my experience with that and just so you guys know, I'm no longer depressed at all. Okay. I am in a great place okay. and we thank you all for that. Um, so this is kind of more of a reflection of where I was and I'm grateful that obviously I'm not there anymore. So this is called Falling. I am completely and utterly depressed. Repressed by my own emotions, emotions that shapeshift daily, I call them transformers. Because sometimes I wake up and I genuinely believe that everything is going to be fine and then I wake up the next day. Wondering why I will cut because my thoughts cut me up like a blade to my wrist. I'm a slave to the slip but you see the blood. The blood dripping down my hand is the only thing that lets me know that I am still alive, but am I still alive? Because I read somewhere that if you're not living life on the edge, then you might be taking up far too much space. But see, the issue is not that I'm afraid to live life on the edge, no. The issue is that I think I have fallen over the edge just falling because depression depression can feel like being lost in an abyss of darkness and in a place where there is no sun there is no moon and there are no stars because they've all fallen to depression depression can feel like a long road but on this road no matter how fast you run your feet will never quite be fast enough see sometimes it feels like I am drowning but this is no ordinary ocean, no. This is an ocean made up entirely of my own tears. See, sometimes I cry. But nobody can see my tears, my fears around me, around me. Everybody is watching me drown in an ocean of my own tears. See, I am Nemo here. But unlike him, my father is not looking for me, no mine. Mine is busy working as a doctor, not realising I'm the one that needs saving. Because depression. Depression is a feeling of hopelessness. It is wanting to speak to God, but having no voice. Having no choice in aiding your own healing. Needing help, but being too ashamed and too prideful to ask. Because depression is not an African thing, I repeat. Depression is not an African thing, but the thing is, I needed help. So when I finally called out to God, it felt as though I called his name out in vain because I heard silence. I heard the echo of my own voice and then silence as if the windows of heaven had been closed to sinners like me and so I fleed back into the darkness hoping somebody else could save me. See, sometimes I, I worry. I worry that perhaps I am already dead. Because every morning I mourn my body in silence and if you look deep into my eyes, right in the centre of my iris, you can see that my silence is suffocating me. Hand on neck, Gasping for air, I am shaking my thighs, trembling in my chair, hand on neck, 
gasping for air, hand on neck, gasping for air. Thank you. That was good. Obviously, if you have friends that they, they're not replying your text, they might not be stush. Because everyone thought I was being stush in uni when I wasn't replying, they thought, you know, maybe I was kind of up myself, but no, it was just anxiety and depression. So, um, but obviously, that's, that's quite different. So, yeah, just, just having a word with your friends sometimes goes a long way. So, to everyone here, just have a, have a nice chat with your friend if you haven't already messaged them after the show. Be like, how are you, sis? Or how are you, bro? And see how they're doing.